the elite elven army unfurls its banners and marches to avenge their fallen Dalian comrades and to drive back the remnants of their evil foes before they have the opportunity to regroup. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Total War Rise of Mordor. We are back again with the second battle in this epic kind of Dungeons and Dragons-esque Lord of the Rings campaign as the elves have unfailed their banners just like officially Devon did to say in that awesome intro. So I want to give him a massive thank you to say, like recording that for me and sending it in to me as well as the people who have created this awesome little mini campaign with online battles. If you also want to go ahead and check out either officially Devon or the Discord that these guys use to create these epic battles, then go ahead and look in the comments down below. It'll be right there. But you can obviously be a part of these battles and maybe even appear in one of these videos. Also, if you missed the first battle, don't worry, you don't have to see it to understand what's going on in this battle. However, if you want to go check it out, I'll leave it at the end of the video so you can go back and take a look at it. It was a pretty epic siege battle as Dale were taken off guard and completely surrounded by the forces of Harad and the Easterling and this is kind of in retaliation this elven army was on its way to help it got the word it rushed to the aid of Dale however they were too late and now they face off against the forces of Harad Easterlings and I believe maybe, maybe it's just two Easterlings and one Harad army which they are fighting off against uh, to go ahead and you know dominate this battlefield if the elves can avenge their brothers then maybe they'll seek help from the Gondorians in the next battle to help muster their forces and march on the enemy forces so yeah as i said this campaign is kind of like a good versus evil campaign so you're not always going to see harad and the eastlings fighting on the frontiers you're going to be maybe seeing isengard come into it you're going to see other factions also making their way in and you guys also seem to really really enjoy the previous uh the previous installment of this mini campaign so if you do again want to continue to see these battles then make sure to drop a like make sure to drop a comment the artillery of the elves come flying in not finding a direct hit unfortunately however i'm sure it's going to cause some sort of retaliation from the evil side on the battlefield um, and the fun thing is as well like not all of these battles are going to be massive i mean the last battle we had something like 14,000 soldiers whereas this battle we only have you know just close just under 4,000 men so that's what i really like about the campaign is that it's going to be very very different in telling and as long as there is enough men oh my god that shot was so close to hitting these guys as long as there's enough men to have a good battle i'm very very okay with it being kind of a bit more of a smaller scope because not every battle has to be this huge engagement and it kind of makes it when you do reach these huge engagements it makes them much more enjoyable especially in these you know longer campaigns um, I believe there's one more installment of this campaign part and I'm sure they'll be working on more to send in and let me show you because you guys do seem to be enjoying this a lot interesting move here by the forces of uh, of Harad and the Eastlings they're going to be throwing their general cavalry down this left flank and that's an advantage that they have over the elves in this battle is they have four units of cavalry whereas the elves only have their general unit however the elves do have a strong line of archers which will just decimate it won't even be close these elven archers will just rip through the forces of Harad and Easterlings. Like, so it's kind of up to them to get in as close as possible. At the moment though, they are just looking to get some artillery exchanges going off, use this range, try and whittle down the enemy numbers. I mean, if they can get a hit on this cavalry, that'd be amazing. No, unfortunately, just missing. Yeah, they're not gonna be hitting that. It's just too, way too fast moving. I say that though, come on Kobe. No, unfortunately, yeah, it's probably better to go after the infantry as this cavalry does just roam around. And as always, I do love the look of the uh, cavalry. Also, if you're interested in Rise of Mordor news, they recently put up an announcement on their Discord uh, hinting that the, the, the pits of Mordor have been busy and that there'll be a new update coming uh, in, uh, in September, so next month. Oh my god, what a hit! That dude deserves a goddamn medal for that strike against the cavalry. I mean, it only killed like three horses, but to hear something moving that fast, that, uh, five horses, that's pretty impressive as the rest of the cavalry spreads out a little bit. My god. The artillery is going to go back after doing that, after trying to focus down the pikemen. Uh, but yeah, they said that there's going to be a small update coming in uh, in September, and I think maybe we'll be getting some, uh, some, some Mordor units. That's kind of what they're hinting at. 
So maybe our first orc units will be arriving in the mod, which will be amazing. Because then once they get added in, bloody magpie can then maybe add in some additional units using kind of pre-existing assets and Attila and stuff. And, you know, we maybe get a few more units like that. Also, trolls. I've done a few videos on trolls in the past. Oh, there we go. They're finding their mark now. That's a lot of kills right there as the Elven Artillery continues to hammer away at the pikemen. That is dirty, the amount of kills they just got. Almost 20 there and almost 20 there. Yeah, basically, they got like 40 kills in that one hit. Um, and they're just buying their time. They're sitting here and taking this fire, which, I don't know, is a good idea because they're only losing a couple men here and there. But it's biding their cavalry time to get around the flanks. And it's also, you know, about to run out of ammunition, so that's when they can really make their move. But I think it's smart enough to try and use this cavalry around the sides as much as they can. The, I mean, the elves are just forming a box as best as they can. They don't want to give up this position, considering they are outnumbered. This is a free versus one at the end of the day. Um, obviously, they, you know, because this is a campaign, they've kind of structured it to be a balanced and stuff, not just a proper free versus one. They need to be careful though on this right hand side and I think the forces of evil are doing a good job at separating these swordsmen. Like realistically there's no reason the elves should commit their forces this far out of the battle. They should really just sit in their box, use their artillery, edge closer and closer because their archers will have much superior range and force the battle. Granted the evil side do have uh, four crossbows and two archers whereas the elves themselves only have five archers. I guess they have five archers, that's quite a lot. Um, but the crossbows will rip through armoured units, so it's something they have to try and focus down. They need to be careful, the Elven General is getting very, very far out from his uh, men, um, and he might end up, you know, being overwhelmed. Look at that, the glimmering, oh my god, it's blinding the, the Elves as they charge forward. It looks like we're going to be going in, though, and here we go, the first cavalry engagement smashing into one another. However, this is going to leave them completely open. Harad are going to engage them in the front, and the Eastings are going to come flying in from the back. The Elven General is being cocky as hell right now as the Eastlings come in as well. However, more swordsmen turning up, and these swordsmen will definitely help out a bit, but this Elven General needs to be tough. The rest of the cavalry is just looking to kind of surround these noble blades and the elven formation is quickly shifting over to this left hand side. This would be the perfect opportunity for the forces of evil to move forward, take the elves whilst they're off guard. You can see the elven general is starting to lose men pretty rapidly. I mean it was a very very bold move to come all this way out. And will the forces of good lose again? I mean, the first battle was kind of you know, given. It would take a miracle for the men of Dale to win. As they were taken off guard, but the elves were somewhat evenly matched in this battle. However, definitely do not count them out yet. Oh wow, the, the cavalry has just run through these swords out here as well. I mean, the horses are losing them, but these, uh, these blade masters are so good if they reach enemy infantry. And here we go, that's a very, very smart move right now from the forces of evil, throwing forward all of their men because, you know, the elves are dysfunctional right now. They're going into a mad panic trying to save their lord. And as I said previously, I would love for these guys to give uh, their generals names and stuff. And if they die, they die and another general kind of takes their place. Because it'd be really cool for the story of this campaign to have it so that, you know, generals die and then come up and, you know, maybe certain names live to fight throughout the entire campaign. And we really get attached to the heroes. Oh, what a perfect hit! This artillery crew has done some work. I mean, how many kills are they on right now? They're on only... 11? Really? Wow. No, that, that must be a lie. Oh yeah, it doesn't count the men burning. Yeah, I remember that now. So the Elven Archers, are they not shooting yet? Oh no, they're just taking a few shots. I think the uh, Elven player is busy focusing over here, trying to save his general. I mean, more energy has come in as the, the Eastlings charge in once again into this fight. The swordsmen with swords, swords and shields are much better equipped in these prolonged engagements. They are definitely struggling. More infantry coming out. And one of the enemy generals going down, that is the Harad general being slain on the battlefield. The archers are moving back and the elves are kind of suffering a little bit because their the main advantage... Units. Yeah, but one of the main, uh, the main benefits of the elves is their superior range. As we're going to be getting these spearmen charging in against the Galadrian elves. And this Spearman unit, it might look a little bit weaker than it is, but this Spearman unit is very good for Harad. 
The archers are now just pummeling away on these spearmen, which isn't a bad idea. All of these spearmen do have their bows, they're like a hybrid unit. Very, very decent indeed. Um, and I mean, it's up to Harad to use these flanks to their advantage. They need to be sending them then round the side and enveloping them. They are doing that with their javelins. And these javelins, if left alone, the red snake javelins, will slaughter if they can get in the back of the enemy flank. They also have cavalry running a bit of a muck as well. But it does look like the elf. The elven supporting their, their cavalry with infantry really helped out. That cavalry engagement went on long enough for this infantry to play a huge part. And now they can simply run back. I mean, it's up to the uh, forces of evil now to take this advantage and really try and take it out. I mean, they're using all of their javelins in the back, but again, the Harad general going down is going to be really bad for morale. And the elven battle line is extremely strong, as you can see, even as golden chevrons as well. It's looking very, very good. The pikemen are going to be doing great over here. This is always a pretty good tactic. And the Elven General was given his life. What did he die to? Oh, the Javelins. Yeah, the Javelins picking him away. I mean, he has been very, very cocky. The unit... Oh, wow! What a Javelin throw right there. The cavalry is just about going to make it with a couple horses. And now the infantry is going to get in and slaughter these. Avenge their generals. I love the weapons, though, that these uh, dudes do have. Really, really cool stuff. These javelins are about to run out of ammunition. And they're definitely inflicting casualties. And I'm pretty sure in this campaign that they, they've created over on their Discord, the casualties really do matter. If they don't matter, uh, hopefully in the next installment of this campaign, they do. Because it'd be really nice that even if the side is heavily outnumbered and supposed to lose a battle, if they can kill a large portion of the enemy army, I would love for that to play a part in the next battle. I think that would be really, really cool to say, oh, you know, the, the Isengard force is a little bit weaker than it should be because the brave stand of the men of Dale who held their city for as long as possible. I think that would be kind of cool, you know, but only only if the men of Dale did put up an exceptional defense. I don't know, it's just a lot of really, really cool stuff that they can create with this kind of campaign, and I really hope they send me in more replays. And if you guys want to see more, the best way to show that is by just simply dropping that like, dropping that comment, it really does help out the channel and also shows the people who create these battles that you want to see more. Um, so over on this left hand side we do have the crossbows who have made their way around the flank hitting away at these archers and just decimating their ranks. Every volley taking out a few men here and there and the Gladian elf armor is thick. I also hope as well they install, um, they, they do custom battles as well because I would love to see you know, battles of Helm's Deep and the, the Gondorian town as well as other you know other cities even just a normal attila custom map there's some really good ones out there i would love them to all play a part in the uh, in the campaign i think that'd be really really cool so the uh, spearmen are trying to guard the flank of the pikemen that the pikemen hold their own bands of power though is starting to show its uh its power and the Gladiator Elves are cutting down the Harad. I mean, losing their general though is pretty big. I think both the Eastling generals have routed. The Harad general has been slain on the battle. And we have a few of these archers still trying to make their stand, but not really doing too much. I mean, these archers were trying their best, but you know, these are so lightly armored. They're basically tribesmen from the eastern reaches of Harad men who have just been conscripted into the army very very talented marksmen but obviously in a, in a melee engagement they're just completely bare and ready to be slaughtered by the elves who have been training you know hundreds if not thousands of years with the blade and there we have it i think we're going to see the majority of the harad forces breaking now we'll speed it up just to kind of run through the last couple seconds of this battle and the engagement does look like it's over. So the uh, the forces of Harad and the Eastlings have been beaten back. Now I imagine this is not the main army of Harad and the Easterlings. Obviously they they took uh, out Eskaroth. Uh, so you know I imagine a large portion of their army is still there. We didn't really see a lot of the uh, elite Eastling forces in this battle. However I'm sure maybe in another battle they will make their appearance. Um, now that the elves have defeated these guys here though, even though they were too late to save Dale, maybe they can move elsewhere. I believe the next battle does persist between the elves 
Gondor and Isengard and maybe Isengard have reinforced the Eastlings and Haradim and Gondor have reinforced the forces of the Elves. So it should be a very very fun battle, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Again massive shout out to officially Devon for doing the intros to these battles or at least for voiceover and also big shout out to the guys sending in these battles, I really appreciate it, they've all been pretty fun. Now this battle was a lot kind of low key on scale but that was still really cool to kind of hopefully show, maybe make these battles just a little bit bigger um, to make them go on for a little bit longer. I think that would be kind of cool, like 20 minute battles would be awesome. However, I'm definitely not complaining. They were still very, very fun and a lot of cool stuff did happen. And I understand that not every battle has to be massive, but maybe having you know, a couple, you know, maybe like another thousand more men would be pretty cool. Um, and obviously, I'm sure balancing will be an issue that they work out as they do more and more of these battles. So, yes, make sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Does it show the kills? Because, yeah, there we go. Cool, we can see the kills. It doesn't normally show this all the time, um, so we just wanted to check it out. So as you can see, the elves racking up a couple hundred kills on their, their swordsmen, and the archers surprisingly not doing amazing. You would assume the archers to do a lot more damage, but it was really up to the swordsmen. Over on the other side, we can see that, yeah, the Eastlings in their army, crossbows doing okay. Uh, over on this army, the javelins, and then the final Eastling army. Yeah, just couldn't really break through. Their cavalry was really their strong part, and unfortunately, they just got overwhelmed by the uh, the infantry supporting that cavalry engagement. So, as I said, make sure to drop a like and a comment. I'll see you guys in the next one.